Hey, I'm Heslin Kim with Polymath, and I'm here with none other than... Charles Hoskinson. Good to be here. Thanks, thanks for uh, taking the time. Um, you know, I've seen you a lot around Korea these days. Could you tell us uh, what, what your roadshow is for, for uh, this region? Well, actually, I haven't been in Korea too long. I came in a few days ago from Singapore, and I got invited to this conference. But I do try to drop by every three, four months. It's got a very vibrant, great community, so it's always fun to see what's going on here. Uh, in, in terms of, um, you, you know, the developments we've had recently uh, with regulations uh, within Korea, um, uh, where, do, where do you see the, the market these days? Yeah, so most of the regulation has focused at the moment on exchanges and ICOs. Mm. Um, the exchange regulation, because the exchanges got too big too quickly, mm. and they didn't have good practices installed, and mm. so there was a little bit of fraud and abuse and so forth. On the ICO side, there was a lot of network marketing and other problems with it, and a lot of the ICOs were probably fraudulent. So the mm. Korean government did step up enforcement, and they mm. kind of cooled down the markets for a little bit. Uh, but we're now on the other side of the U, so things are getting a heck of a lot better, and uh, we're starting to see the ecosystem grow uh, very well. So Korea is a huge market. It's actually surprisingly one of the largest Asian markets in the mm. world. Uh, in, in terms of uh, the market growth and um, maturation that you've seen over, over time, uh, where would you say that the trends are coming out of most these days? Well, there's a lot of utility token plays that are coming. Um, there's a lot of people trying to decentralize old things like advertisement or data custodianship. Um, there's still a lot of infrastructure plays. Everybody's chasing Ethereum. Uh, we all do that. Uh, and so there are a lot of people want to be the 2.0 there. Uh, there's also some people still trying to innovate in the payment side of spaces. And mm -hmm. we've seen some competitive offerings. Uh, so still some people chasing value stable currencies because that's required for lending and for actual real transactions. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's less about, well, where are we innovating? It's more about just noticing that there's an enormous increase increase in the quantity of innovation. If you look at the amount of research papers being published by real academics, it's doubling almost every year. If you look at the amount of good projects with solid people behind them, in some cases Nobel laureates or Turing Prize winners, just like, uh, for example, Silvio McCauley out of uh, MIT, he invented zero-knowledge cryptography, and now he's building his own blockchain called Algorand. So there's some really good people that are entering the space, and uh, it's great to compete with them, and it's great to learn from them. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, what, uh, you mentioned utility tokens. Uh, as far as security tokens, uh, where do you see that market headed? Yeah, so the STO is the new ICO, right? Yeah, so the big challenge was that if you're going to do a security token, you need specialized exchanges and licenses to trade these things. And people are applying for that regulation, and a lot of people have gotten through that regulation. So very soon, Coinbase and T0 and others will be able to trade them. And then I suspect a lot of these guys who've done SAFs or people are doing offerings will, instead of doing them in kind of a gray area, trying to make a security a utility uh, style way, will just go ahead and embrace the security status of the token mm -hmm. and trade it on these exchanges because they'll be able to get liquidity. So I think come 2019, we'll see a decrease in the amount of ICOs and a massive increase in STOs, uh, and we'll see a lot of liquidity for STOs. And those are actually very exciting projects because for the first time ever, we're going to be able to do some really exciting things. Like, for example, let's say you're a drug company. Mm -hmm. You have these huge IP portfolios that could potentially be very valuable. So so you know your patents are worth billions, but you don't usually monetize a lot of those patents until after you get drug approval. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you could take your patent portfolio, tokenize it, and then say, okay, whoever has the token, if we, we get lucky and we get a Viagra or we get a Cialis or something out of this, then you guys will proportionally get dividends on the revenue generated from yeah. the monetization of that patent. Wow. Under a utility token, you wouldn't be able to do that. Under a security token, you could. Mm -hmm. So this brings up a whole new way of creating liquidity for things that are worth a lot of money, but previously liquid. Mm -hmm. Another example would be look at the Marvels franchise for Disney. You know, that's worth a lot of money and, it's, and they've been able to monetize it. So what if they could tokenize that franchise and every time they create a movie, you guys would get some royalties or something on that movie and it'd give Disney the ability to pre-sell 10, 20 billion dollars worth of Marvel tokens. Uh, so security tokens give those prospects at the large scale as well as on the SME side and that's going to be really exciting to see in 2019 and 2020. Fantastic. You know, you're, you're a major visionary in the space. Uh, wh where do you see new innovation happening and, and things that we might not have uh, been hearing about recently? Yeah, so there's this old saying that everything's old is uh, new again and everything that's new is old again. 
Uh, so what we've seen is a lot of great concepts like multi-party computation and zero-knowledge cryptography, uh, which was originally invented in the 1980s, is starting to actually get vogue again and being updated and pulled into the cryptocurrency space. So uh, why we're doing this is because we, we want to do things like private off-chain smart contracts, we want to do things like verified computation or outsourceable computation, where it doesn't really make sense to do things in the Ethereum model, but you still want the trustlessness that Ethereum has, and you, and you don't want to pay the Ethereum price for running these things. So the demands of scalability and the, de the economic demands of running these things are forcing us to look into completely new ways of doing things. And the good news is not only have we discovered them as a space, they're being actively built and pulled into stacks. Mm -hmm. So what gets me really excited are seeing these level two, level three style protocols, which contain a lot of power to get us to hundreds of thousands to millions of transactions per second, to do off-chain computation, to do private computation, but still preserve the trust and privacy model that we've come to take for granted in the cryptocurrency space. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing. Uh, is there anything you'd like to promote to our viewers, uh, where to find you or, or any uh, anything you've been doing these days? Yeah, you can reach me at um, IOHK underscore Charles. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. So uh, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And no, I'm not giving away Ether. <laughs> Great. Thanks so Thank much you. for your time. This is fun.